Hey everybody, I'm back with another video, um, and this is basically a review of the army list I took to the Rocky Mountain Open, um, which was just this um, last weekend. I had meant to do this the Friday before, uh, but I was kind of madly caught up in, <laughs> in building and painting models at the very last minute. Uh, as you can see, you know, a lot of these models really only have three colors and a base. That's kind of what the, the requirement was for the tournament. So I really focused on just getting, um, you know, the basic coverage I needed to play at the tournament. And so you'll see that, you know, some of these models are, are various works in progress, um, but I will continue to work on them and, and kind of bring them up to a standard somewhere between uh, battle ready and, and tournament ready. Um, but as I said, this is my uh, kind of review of um, my list for the Rocky Mountain Open. A uh, huge thank you to my son Kyle, who was on break from um, college on spring break and um, kindly uh, stayed up with me till one in the morning uh, the day of the tournament painting models and uh, doing these bases. He actually painted all these bases, Doomble Brown, in prep for. Um, some Martian iron, uh, iron Crest and Iron Hearth coverage, which we didn't have time to get to. Uh, but huge thanks to him. And uh, just as a quick FYI, uh, this is the first of three videos I plan to do around the Rocky Mountain Open. This is just a review of my army list. I'll have another video where I kind of review how Admech stacked up against the six opponents and different factions I played against. And then finally, I'm going to put together a... Uh, a video that has some lessons learned for people like myself who this was my first tournament and um, you know just some lessons learned from having done it um, you know done it first for the first time so so I'm gonna start by just going through the list the way um, it's it's actually presented in my army list I've got a link to it in paste bin so you can kind of follow along and see exactly uh, which units have what, uh, which units have have what. Um, but to start with, I'll start with my leaders, and um, first among those is this here cyber cybernetica data smith, who's leading a unit of four Castellan robots. I then have a tech priest engine seer here, who is basically tasked with healing and slapping that uh, five up field of pain on uh, the, uh, one of the one of these vehicle model, uh, vehicle models per turn. And then finally over here I have a techno-archaeologist leading this group of Skitari Rangers. Um, and also another leader I have is Kyria Draxus leading a unit of Vanguard and a Scorpius Dune Rider. And finally, I have a Vindicare Assassin, kind of on his own right here. Um, now to go through the list kind of as uh, in order, starting with uh, my battle line. So as I mentioned, I've got um, a unit of 10 uh, Skatari Rangers. Uh, I use them mainly to stay in my backfield um, and use Sticky Obsec to... Uh, on my home objective and I pretty much used them in that capacity for the entire game and I relied on the Techno-Archaeologist uh, 12 inch deep strike denial buff which proved to be pretty useful but um, I'll put more of this in my lessons learned video but you really have to measure <laughs> carefully every single game because there were a couple times I thought my backfield was screened out and it wasn't. So, uh, but for the most part, when I used him properly, he, um, you know, he served a useful full role for me. And like I said, the next unit uh, was this 10-man unit of Skatari Vanguard, led by Kyria Draxus in the Dune Rider. Um, really kind of intended her and this unit to be a second wave um, reinforcement to kind of land on a key objective and with the vanguards minus one OC ability to enemy infantry within three inches I thought that would be a good use for them um, and then next up we've got 
Five Taraxi Sky Stalkers, which are undeniably the most fragile unit that Games Workshop has ever made. Uh, these broke multiple times during the game, and thankfully I took along some sticky putty to do some um, on the battlefield repairs to kind of hold these together. Uh, great unit, uh, just super fragile, and I'm probably going to replace these spindly, kind of useless um, stands that GW provides with something I got from Deadly Print Studios that gives them nice kind of exhaust trails. But really happy with this unit. Loved that it's Deep Strike. Loved that they have grenades. The only unit in the Admet Codex. Um, and um, found them to be really useful. And then next up, I've got two units of three Cerberus Raiders. And I use these guys primarily to um, start at the front of my lines and use their 9-inch scout ability to get out early on objectives and kind of deny... Um, deny those to my opponent, at least initially. Also use them for some mission objective play, like getting into corners quickly. Um, all in all, I think they're very useful, inexpensive, quick kind of objective monkey units. And so I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed using them. I then have uh, two Iron Strider Balistari, um, one unit, uh, two units of one each. And I use them in a similar capacity to the Raiders, mainly to screen, um, also for long-range anti-tank. And to be honest with you, during two days, over the two days of the tournament and six games, I think with all my shooting, I probably hit with them once or twice. So that single shot of theirs is really a liability. Um, granted, if you have the money to afford 18 chickens, <laughs> you know, you can... Uh, your odds of hitting with them, um, you know, increase. I guess you can't have 18 iron striders. You could have nine, and your odds would increase of hitting. But as of right now, they're kind of an odd unit there. I think they're very useful, mainly just being a tanky, relatively tanky kind of move blocking unit, which occasionally can contribute some anti tank shots. Um, but um, like I said, I took two uh, units of one here. And then uh, after them, uh, kind of the centerpiece of my army and probably my single favorite unit in the whole faction is this unit of four Castellan robots. Um, I equipped them all with twin link fists because without any um, Cataphron breachers with arc rifles on my army, I really, I think I felt like I needed something that could really deliver damage. And the Castellans for the most part, I think they did. Um, in melee only. Uh, I equipped them with a heavy phosphor blaster because I like the 36 inch range and the AP minus one uh, damage two profile I think is useful. Other people like flamers. I'll probably get a second unit and maybe give them flamers, but overall um, I used these guys to plow into the, or at least try to plow into the heaviest, um, um, the toughest kind of any mo enemy models that enemy units that I saw or I came across. Uh, and then I've got two Honor Dragoon Crawlers, one with the Eradication Beamer, you can see there, and one with the Neutron Laser. And I noticed after I put this together that I put it in upside down. So <laughs> apologies for that. But that's what you get for um, putting some of these things together uh, at one in the morning the day of a tournament. So, um, so anyway, I probably will fix that at some point or maybe I'll leave it the way it is. Maybe this um, onager was built using a different STC where they put the stubber on top. So regardless, maybe I'll do some kit bashing with it. But the idea was here is that this would stay in the backfield with a neutron laser um, and take pot shots at, at uh, tougher enemy units. Uh, I also found their base sizes to be extremely useful to, de to deny deep strike. So... Um, you know, having one of these in the backfield along with the, the Scorpius disintegrator with the Belaros and the unit of Rangers, you know, I almost consistently in most games, if I deployed them and measured properly, uh, they did a really good job of kind of screening out people from deep striking. But like I said, this one had the 48 inch range neutron laser and this one has the casino cannon. Um, pretty happy with both uh, you know they're super tanky units and almost in every game they were among the last units on the field just because they were so hard for 
uh, my opponents to take down. Um, and then after that, I have two Scorpius Disintegrators. First time I've played these at all in any game. Um, I've got one with a Ferromite Cannon, as you can see here, for shooting. Um, it gets the plus one to hit versus monsters and vehicles. And then the Belaros uh, Indirect Fire weapon. Uh, I kept this Scorpius in my backfield, and this one I advanced along with the Onagers and the Engine Seer. Um, overall, I was pretty happy with all of them, but playing against a lot of factions I've never played against before, like Orcs and Votan and uh, others, it's pretty obvious that Admech is kind of at a firepower disadvantage, um, especially if you're not taking Breachers. So... When it came to just dissing it, dishing out enough damage to you know, put the hurt on the enemy, um, you know, I think the Admech armor is tanky. Unfortunately, these disintegrator tanks don't have an invuln, but the engine seer can slap a uh, five up female paint on them, which mitigates that somewhat. And I probably should have taken more than than one in, one engine seer. Overall, I was relatively happy with them. Um, you know, I used the the Belaros Disintegrator sit in my backfield and lob indirect at enemy infantry, but I don't know, you know, I probably killed maybe two or three infantry units every time I, I use this weapon. But other than that, that's really all this unit contributed because I kept him in the backfield. I uh, would love to hear how other people might have used the Disintegrator with Belaros, but I think they're probably overpriced for what they do. Um, and, you know, killing two to three infantry a turn maybe isn't worth 180 point investment. Who knows? Maybe in my next list I'll try something else. But, um, uh, but those were the two that I took. Uh, next up is I've got two Sidonian Dragoons, uh, two in one unit. I use these guys mainly to move block and to charge um, enemy threats. Um, also kind of a second wave unit. Um, Fairly, you know, I've been fairly happy with them, but um, again, I think they just lack um, raw damage output, and especially against uh, tougher enemy vehicles and monsters. The Annie Walker keyword can be useful, um, you know, going against Dreadnoughts, Tau, uh, units that are walkers, but um, it's kind of a... I don't know, I, I wish it would, the, the Lance was anti-vehicle versus anti-walker, which would make them much more useful. And I also wish that the Lance was, had higher strength and did more damage. Um, I was really bummed out when I saw that uh, the Attilan Rough Riders, which are a human cavalry unit that the guard can use, um, have a weapon option for their Lances that is actually has higher strength and does more damage than what these supposed um, you know, amazing pieces of technology that the Mechanicus produce can, can do. So that's a bit disappointing. But overall, uh, I think these are pretty decent units. They can advance and charge. They have a ton of other abilities. And um, uh, the only reason I took two of them and the only reason I took two Iron Striders is that I only have four of them. So uh, I refuse to, <laughs> to pay $60 for a single unit. Um, of these guys. I've got one more in a box and I can't decide what I'm gonna build them yet, but I have decided not to buy any more chickens until, you know, their profile changes. Cause I think $60 for a 50 point unit, at least for these guys is a little, little insane. So, um, so after them, you know, kind of the last vehicle unit is the Dune Rider, which I think in 10th edition is actually really a pretty awesome vehicle. Um, I had pretty good success with it. First time I've really heavily used a transport. Uh, Kyria Draxis is awesome. Uh, I would heartily recommend her for uh, any Admech player because um, her data sheet is literally better than the vast majority of our army. Um, she's got four attacks with her crystal weapon, which shots do two damage each, and she's got a psychic indirect attack uh, with 18 inch range. And uh, that also does two damage. I think it's eight attacks. Uh, but she, in every game uh, that I was able to use her, uh, she killed more enemy units than uh, 
than the, the squad she was attached to. So um, if you're an admit player and you're not using her, I would strongly recommend that you do because she really um, helps at least a tiny part of our army punch up a little better. So definitely worth it. Um, a bit of a fragile model though. She kind of, her arm and her bird disintegrated <laughs> mid-battle. Uh, maybe her bird got terrified and took her arm off with it fleeing the battlefield. But regardless, I got to do some repair. She's in a uh, in the uh, medical tent now, getting her arm reattached, I guess. But uh, anyway, I highly recommend um, everyone use her for admic if you can. And then finally, the Vindicare Assassin. First time I've ever used one, um, and I have to admit that I forgot him in about probably more than half my games. I stuck him up on a on a high, you know, like a tower type, um, you know, at the top of terrain, and um, I just totally forgot he was there most of the time. So I really didn't use him to his full potential. Um, probably will take him again, but um, like I said, my fault that I didn't, I forgot him on him and didn't use him uh, for most of the time. So, so that is um, um, the army that I took to RMO. You know, overall I was happy. My goal was was just to kind of get through the tournament. Um, knew going in, I wasn't probably wasn't going to win any games, and, and I did go 0 and 6. But I learned a ton, met a lot of awesome people and uh, learned a lot about ADMEC as an army, which I'll address uh, in the next video or two. So uh, thanks for watching. And like I said, I've got two more videos coming up um, focused on kind of RMO and what it's like to go to uh, a tournament as a noob, um, <laughs> not very good uh, ADMEC player and uh, I have some tips that might be useful. So until then, I will talk to you later. Bye.